Good morning, Jackson, Mississippi. Welcome to the Clay Edwards Show. More adrenaline. You know, it's a pretty interesting time to be alive. What's the saying that made the times you live in be interesting? We have accomplished that. And more testosterone for your morning drive. But when you know you've got a problem, how about tell people and be honest? What's going on? Going to war on cancel culture and bringing the spotlight on issues and topics from around the city of Jackson. I feel like Jackson, Mississippi. No one else wants to talk about. The whole system is corrupt and evil. It's unreal. And they don't care. And everybody knows that. It's just sad. And fights for the soul of America. I'm going to need y'all to explain to me what a positive solution is. Because you positive solutions only people have been in charge for a while now. And I'm not seeing too many positive solutions. You never met a mother Strap in, turn up the volume, and get ready, Jackson, for unfiltered, no sugar added talk radio. Broadcasting live from the Generator Power Solutions Studio, it's award winning podcaster Clay Edwards. Mississippi, welcome to the rock station without rock music. It's the Clay Edwards Show here on 1039 WYAB. I am joined by the soon to be mayor of canton mississippi yes it does appear that way but i, I think yeah, that, chip matthews that's a good intro but I, I think my intro needs to be uh since i am the self-proclaimed mayor of canton at this point and uh of course we will be filing our papers later today that was breaking news here and as you saw on the news uh city of canton didn't uh did not confirm the election and they uh threw out the mayor for basically saying there's two ballots and uh there's another a bunch of uh, things going on, shenanigans, we'll call them. Get the brooms. And I said, okay, I'm the mayor. So since this is seeming to work, I think that I'm going to call Trump and I'm going to be his sidekick, and we're just going to go up there and say, okay, Biden, we win. Get the heck out of here. Get on out of here. Get on out of here, boy. <laughs> All right. It is the Friday edition of the Clay Edwards Show. We have made it. Another week, man. Chip, after yesterday's show, yes, which I thought was one of our best ones, it, it was, yes. that was a fun show. I bet you I got a hundred text messages from people talking about that was good radio. I felt like I was listening to a, like a real morning show. Yeah, I was like, as opposed to the fake one I've been, <laughs> I've been doing for the last three months. Well, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, we got a lot of compliments on us. So good times. Well, Thank you for good, coming good. back. Oh, um, you're welcome. So I went and worked for ten hours, mostly out in the sun, okay. which you know, blue collar guy here. Okay. <laughs> Um, then, and they have a new rule for me at work. What's that? Is I can't post on Save Jackson's. So I can't get involved in any internet dramas. Didn't you? Uh, while I'm at work, you had an internet drama problem once before in your past. I have. I had that old Miss fans uh, trying to get me fired from my job. <laughs> yes, they did. They did. I, they uh, and I've and I've really held that grudge. You know, I'm just kind of getting over that. But, um, yeah. So. I see that I got tagged in some stuff yesterday on social media. It's like, we want Clay's opinion on what's going on with DHS and this, that, and the other. Let me tell y'all, nobody's going to tell me what to be mad about, first and foremost. Right. I do have a problem with what's going on with DHS. But the thing is, clearly Shad White has caught these people. Correct. And they're going to be punished. So the thing is, like, well, you talk about these black Jackson politicians, but you don't talk about this. Well, that's not what interests me necessarily. Well, one, and and, and, and I can't help the Jackson politicians are black. They're let, just bad politicians. Well, here's your problem. Yesterday's show was only an hour long. Yeah, fried chicken and watermelon was the prevalent con- conversation of the day. I saw it on the internet. I didn't see much on DHS. You know, I did not see anything about it from the local news. I look at the well, local news every day. I was on the local news, and DHS wasn't. So why is this guy complaining? So that that that's kind of my my thing is. I don't mind talking about any of it. Right. But it actually has to be news here to talk about it. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't even know about it until late in the day when I saw the tag. And at that point, I'm not, again, I'm not allowed to comment or post on stuff at work anymore. There you go. And, uh, but that, I just want to get that out of the way. Yes. What's going on at DHS is bad. Um, if people, if, if white conservatives committed crimes, then they need to go. To jail. Exactly. If anybody commits a yeah, crime, I mean, you need to go to jail. You know, my angst is that it keeps going on in Jackson and nobody's getting in trouble. Okay, and the biggest crime, and you well, you brought that up, I watch on the news, that the city of Jackson wants to revitalize Ferry Street. Man, look. So, <laughs> like, last week they came out and said they were going to revitalize 
the um the downtown area around the convention center. They love that word, as you know. Yes, m- me and Chip have quite the rich history with uh, revitalization projects downtown. They and never- they gave us tons and tons of money. <laughs> no, they didn't. Yeah, <laughs> that never that never came to fruition. See, somebody will clip that. But out. But see, and- at one point, you got to remember, at one point, Clay and I on the weekends were responsible. For a Thursday, Friday, Saturday in downtown Jackson, probably responsible for eight to ten thousand people every weekend. Yep. Between both, between everything, between fire and one hundred and five and whatever else was going on. Yeah. I mean, you had a whole, you had two clubs at one time. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. So they got on there last week, right? Antar, they did a press conference and he said, "We're going to revitalize this." And they were like, well, what are you going to do? They said, we're going to bust up the uh, the curbs there for the parking lot, you know, where it's the right. slabs across right. the street. I'm like, I will give you this. That does absolutely need to be done. But I would not call that revitalizing. No. Revitalizing is my idea of revitalization, I, it's, but it's like them and their great reset. Right. Yeah. You know, they, they, they Democrats love to get big words and right. make them mean other things. Oh, yeah. I'm from Canton. Now. Yeah, you've never heard Truly Talk. Planned Parenthood. <laughs> You know, a nice way of saying we kill babies. Yes. You know, but <laughs> de- de- Democrats, boy, they're great at that. Oh, yeah. But, but you know, the uh, whole Jackson thing, though, I think is, um, I mean, I once tried to rent one of the buildings on Fair Street. Mm-hmm. And this, this guy eventually, uh, I believe he got in trouble and went to jail and uh, had to return some money. But well, that they, was me and you. It was David Watkins. We went yeah, down there. Yeah. Uh, no, this was after I had fire. He went down there and he gave me a contract that was about, uh, 300 pages. Yeah. And I read it and it said, we will loan you $1 million. You cannot touch the principal and you can get another million dollars and renovate the building and pay back that loan. Then as you pay back that loan, everything that you renovated becomes the property of us. And in the end of three or four years, you will be kicked out of your building. Yeah. You'll I get went, a, You'll get it up and going for us. Thank you. And then we'll shoot so you So you want away. me to build this thing and make it happen and then go away. And I still owe a million dollars. Thank you. And you're going to keep every, all my renovations? Wrong guy. <laughs> yeah. You know, so when Chip and I opened up 105 together, and then we, we were in our separate ways, Chip went and opened fire. We continued to run 105. At some point there, we reconnected, and David Watkins tried to get us to, and my timeline may be a little off here, tried to get us to open up a spot on Fair Street. And, right. man, I remember we even went down there and set up a table. It was like a Fair Street festival thing going yeah. on, and – it was kind of an unwrapping of Fair Street. Right. And I just think about all the time, energy, and effort that was wasted into that. So right. it's been tied up in litigation for a while. Right. And they've come out yesterday, and I tried to find the article to play for y'all here on WLBT, and it's, it's missing in action. Right. But they're not going to – I'm just telling you. Look, I hope I'm wrong. I want to go on record today and say I hope I'm wrong. I hope in one year from today somebody can pull this back up and say, Clay, you were wrong. Okay. But, but- 25 years of – we're working on Fair Street. We got something great, new, big. Every time a politician's got something going on right now, it's Antar and this water c- fiasco. Yeah. It's di- direct and divert. Direct and divert. Don't worry about the water. Let's go bust up some concrete in a building we already tore down 80 years ago. <laughs> you know, first off, <laughs> how about the guy that called in, what was it, two days ago? Right. Yesterday, maybe. We we're talking about the jails and water. It was two days ago. Yeah. Talking about jails and uh, water parks. Right. I can't believe I let this one sl- slide by without catching it. But somebody texts me and says, you're going to turn the metro into a water park in a city that can't keep its water running. Uh, how did we miss that? I have no clue. But I uh, shout out to the person that sent that to me because it was just that low-hanging fruit that was well, right there. Well, once again, it would be – let's put it this way. You could build that water park in that area of town, never cut the water on because nobody's ever coming to it. Well, Jacksonians will go, but I mean, they, they will. I mean, people, the area would support it, but nobody outside the area is going to come to Jackson to support it. They'll just start, keep going to to the one at the Philadelphia. And- so the subject is, let's go back to the Ferris Street. If you revitalize Ferris Street in its current lo- or the entertainment district in that current location, do you think that it would be successful? No. Okay. If you built that area closer to the interstate, Yes. Okay. See, that's it. It's the same, same problem you have with the zoo. You could go spend a hundred million dollars revitalizing yeah. the zoo. If it's if you still had to go through Bosnia to get to it, nobody's going to want to go. And look, and I get, and I look, I know that y'all hear me now. And if you didn't know me ten years years ago, twelve years ago, fifteen years ago, when Chip and I moved and opened up one hundred and five down in two thousand in two thousand two, 
there was not a bigger cheerleader for downtown Jackson for a decade plus than Chip Matthews and Clay Edwards. That's true. I, I had all the crime stats. I would tell you that, yes, Jackson has a crime problem, but downtown, downtown statistically, there is, it's the lowest crime rate in the city. I mean, I could sit there and spew all that same stuff that people are spewing now. I drank all the Kool-Aid. We were going to redo Ferris Street. I mean, just put it in my veins. There you go. And f- think 15 years roughly later, I was like, they're lying. Nothing has Nothing's happened. ever going to happen. Nothing. They, the only thing they did was Boulevard, um, Capitol Cap- Street. But, you know, the reality is that I built, our building was on the corner of Farish and uh, um, Capitol Street. And what they should have done was allow us to be 24 hours from the get-go. And remember, we went, because we weren't over in the historic district another block away in a run-down, broke-down building, which we were in a, in a building that needed some help. But yep. All right, look, we're going to take a break. You're listening to The Clay Edwards Show. and I, My guest today is soon-to-be self-proclaimed mayor of Canton, Mississippi, Mr. Charles E. Matthews, Jr., a.k.a. Chip. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the What's going on? Welcome back we to the Clay Edwards <laughs> Show. I saw a shiny red light on the board, and I just hit it, you know. There you go. <laughs> Uh, I am here in the Generator Power Solution Studio, and I am joined by Chip Matthews. So um, I know y'all heard the Legacy Garage commercial during the break there. That's Ed Means Legacy Garage. So I was by there last night about 10 o'clock. He's doing my wife Crystal's Civic, doing the full the full Monty on it. The, 10 o'clock um, at night. He works late. There you go. He works late. That's that's the kind of people you need to be around. Business owner. Yes. Self, you know, self-made everything. There you go. Um, been doing it since 1999. Pretty much, in I, he didn't invent ceramic coating, but he was the first one around here, really doing it. He, right. When these body shops, this is what they put on. When you hear ceramic coating, when you go to a car dealership, for instance, and they try to sell you that paint protective right. thing, and it's like a thousand dollars and a yeah. five seven year guarantee. That's what he does. That's what he right. he, he puts that on. Right. It's the I mean, it's a super polish. I mean, right. it's, it's something else, man. I I'm still learning about it's it. Ceramic. I, I feel like I'm doing it a disservice trying to explain it to y'all. So I'm getting my wife's car done, paying for this out of pocket, and we're doing some cool before and after pictures. And her her car is not some old car. It's a relatively new car, and we're gonna see because it's easy to go get an old busted up car. Like if I was doing my my 07 Infinity. Okay. It, the before and after would be would, would be like something they put in a commercial, but that's right. e- that's easy to take an old car and make it look good. So basically, this is like when you go and look at a car on the floor at Mercedes, and it goes, "Now that is a high shine. That is that, that, that super it. mirror look. That's it. That's what we're going for here." And uh, I'm excited to see it. I know Crystal is excited. I, she's not a quote unquote car person, okay? You know, and she's excited about getting her car uh, cleaned up. Or uh, again, that's a doing it a disservice. Detailed. By Ed Means at Legacy Garage, and you too can get your vehicle detailed by Ed Means of Legacy Garage by giving him a call today at 601 941 5312 or just swing by there and see him at his Commercial Park Drive office at 1039 Commercial Park Drive in Pearl. And that is right there, it's kind of a weird spot. It's it's behind, it's behind the churches, no, it's behind the Bob Boyt. Honda dealership there in Brandon. If you, oh, I got you. And it, it kind of comes up behind it's the Whitfield. Line, it's kind of the line, line where Brandon Pearl go is. So. Yeah, it, exactly. There used to be, there's a house right there that used to be a barbecue restaurant. Yes, I can't remember the name of it, but it's right next to it. Right. So uh, look, Edge, good people, man. I, I I love local business owners. There you go. Gets, like I can pick up the phone and I can talk to the guy whose name is on the building. Yes. You know, I mean, sometimes I, I've been that guy and it goes through, you go through a lot as a local business owner and be, the, and be that guy. I mean, like for instance, I started out in the restaurant business when Fred Sramy talked me into it. When I was, I went from radio to mm-hmm. the County line steakhouse and Fred was the first guy. And I, I, I went and ate with him last night and it is just great to have a guy that's going to walk around, come to your table, shake your hand. Same for a business owner, like in Canton, you can go to different places and the guy that owns that business is in there and he shakes your hand. Uh, I know that Mr. Walmart has passed. He would have done that in some locations, but he couldn't be everywhere. You still need to buy local and hang out with the local people, and you're going to probably get 10 times, 1,000 times better service than going into like a oh, in, yeah. a big box store. Hey, look, man, it's the same thing at the dealership I work at. The guy's name is on the building. The customer's 
at worst know that if if I can't get their answer, if Peter, the other manager, can't get their answer, if the service department can't do it, then go sit down with Mr. Steven and they're going they're, they're going to get a resolution of some sort or another. Mm-hmm. And I think that goes. You like to know that if you're having a problem. It's going to be taken care of, or at least you understand why from the horse's mouth that it can't be. Well, that's the same way you should also treat your politicians. You should yep. be able to pick up the phone and say, okay, Antar, we need to get this hole fixed. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got 10,000 holes in Jackson. I ain't got time to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> speaking of politicians, yes. the newly minted older woman of Brandon yes. just just text Miss Sharon Womack who uh, Alderman at large Alderman at large is that how okay. you say that Yeah that's means you're over the whole city She's she said that um the name of that restaurant with that used to be a house was called Sea Paul's Okay That's right it was right. Sea Paul's So uh, by the way when we went to Sharon's um little inauguration dinner party uh celebration whatever you want to call it downtown in Brandon last night could look, man. I couldn't be happier for somebody. I mean, she is legit. She yes, she is. She is a she is a lifelong Brandonian, right? Brandonian. Everybody, everybody is a Brandonian or a Cantonian or a Jacksonian. Yeah, I was a I was a Barimian. Yes, for a little while. <laughs> and you were South Jacksonian. South Jacksonian. Oh, Sonian. You are gonna add that to? Oh, well, that's only because it was a hotel called the Jacksonian. It was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. So, look, uh, mm-hmm. hey, Sharon, thank you for listening and congratulations on uh, on winning and. We expect great things out of you up there in uh in Brandon, and I'll be the first one to call anytime I see a pothole. Well, you're not going to see a pothole in Brandon. I did not move from Jackson to Damn. get a flat tire from a pothole in Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's nice out there. I'm telling you, man. It's it. I I didn't realize that I really did have a, a bit of a PTSD from living in Jackson. You did, and I don't want to compare it to the same thing that military go through, but it is you you you, you create get a little brain damage when all you see is abandonment and blight. potholes and blight. crime and blight. It man that really does work on your mm-hmm. on your men- mental state. Well, you know. You know that's the way it is. It's like looking at clutter and then you wake up one day and you clean up the clutter around you. Yeah. You know it's like, it's like what we expect you to do in Canton. Yes, I will be cleaning the clutter. But right now we're going to be out of uh people at City Hall cuz they'll probably all be indicted for uh Election fraud. Allegedly. Nobody knows who made two ballots. How do you not know who made two ballots? But anyway. It's interesting, man. I mean, you know, you've been on the show for, been coming on here for every bit of the last month, right. at least. And you've been talking about it and talking about it, but the the wheels of justice move slow. Right. You talked about it yesterday, and I guess it's not that I don't take you serious, because right. I know you're being serious, but again, things move slow. And we've seen uh, and, and allegations got, of election fraud for the last year, and nothing seems to happen from it. So, well, they don't report it from Canton. We put three people in jail uh, four years ago so, who committed election fraud, and four years ago they should have gotten the mayor then because they in his office they took a uh, voting machine, would not let me watch the voting process being counted. I didn't get to watch any count, and they were in there clicking on a machine just as quick as you could go. You know, so to see it unfold as fast as it did yesterday, I'm at Sharon's little function. Right. And I get the, well, I was at work yesterday and I got right. the I got the thing from WLBT. Right. I sent it to you. I was like, holy cow. And then I'm sitting there with uh, Sharon and Fred Shanks and we call you and we're like, what's going on, man? <laughs> <laughs> and you broke it down. And I, dude, I'm going to tell you, it's very rarely do I get that happy for other people. But knowing how hard you've worked and everything you put into it, that if there was ever some justice due to somebody. It is Chip Matthews when it comes to this Canton stuff. And it's all but it's Thank you. and it's not because Chip Matthews wants to be mayor of Canton. No, I do uh, you know, I would it's a, rather, it's a calling to just, try to save Canton. You got to do you, it's it, I feel like I need to pay back the adults who I was who 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 brought me up. I, I remember all the businessmen who did what they did and ran that community when I was growing up and I look at I owe it to their legacy to Step up and be the man. And I believe every generation of every city, the next generation has to step up to protect their city. And in Canton, we gave up 27 years ago. We all gave up. And we got to get back to where everybody steps up and be a part of the system. It's just like here in Jackson. Um, There are people that don't – you got to – things started going down here, and everybody says, well, I'm not going to be in politics. I'm not going to run for office. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. It can't be like this. It can't be like that. 
it can't ever be like it used to be. Well, we're not looking for it to be like it used to be, but we would like it a lot better. And, and how and about that, move forward from the point that you were at versus continuing to slide backwards? Correct. That that, that is that, all I'm asking. Well, that's only that's where you got to start. You got to take a little bit at a time and just start fixing it a little bit. But what we need to do is get more people inspired to run for office. I promise you that in the next election four years from now, there will be six or seven or eight people running for mayor, which four years ago we had eight people run for mayor. I remember. Okay, and when that happened because— We're talking about Ken. Right, and I went out and made sure—I was out, and everybody's going, Chip, all these people are running against you. I go, that's great. That means eight people want the job. We had—and uh, we probably had 51 people in all the races running for for public office in— and that's what it's got to be. You've got to get to where people get on the ballot. You need 10 people to pick from because the one or two or three that finally get on the ballot, you go, oh, I really don't like Chip. Chip is blah, 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 blah. You know yeah. what he does? He goes out and does blah, 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 blah. Well, excuse me. I'm the only one on the ballot. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to, don't, don't complain unless you get on the ballot. We have a fellow that does a show who every – let me start over. We have a fellow that does a show here every Saturday morning from 11 to 1, I believe, Alan Ramsey. His whole thing is called Do Something America. Right. And it is just to motivate people to get up and do something. Right. Start a radio show, run for mayor, right. run for alderman, alderman at large, right. city council, go clean up garbage off the side of the street to do something. And uh, that's what a lot of us don't do. I mean, look, I decided to take my pouting and moaning offline and – Make it a real thing, and that's what I'm doing. You know, hopefully, I'm motivating people to do yeah. stuff. And and you, you know? been, and look, I have known you, I guess, since you were a kid. So around 91, and, 92. Yeah, and you, you went from doing this, and then you always have moved forward. Then you you hit a stale moment where uh, you were doing some things, and then you started and started doing the car thing. And I was going, okay, okay, that's that's pretty impressive. I always said. One day I would go sell some cars, and it, it hadn't happened yet, but I'm going to at some point. You know, I would I'm like, wholesaling cars. <laughs> I would like to retire to Clay's used car and detail shop. You know what I mean? Like, kind of do a little bit of both. But look, yeah. we'll start promoting that new business on the other side of this break. You're listening to The Clay Edwards Show, and I am joined in studio again by Chip Matthews here on 103.9 WYAB. All right, welcome back to the Clay Edwards Show. I am live here in the Generator Power Solutions studio, and this segment is brought to you by my buddy Casey Bridges with Hopper Properties. Are you looking for someone that can help you with buying, selling, or listing your home? Casey can. If you're looking for someone to pay cash for your home today, say, I can't take it no more. I got to get out of Jackson. Somebody buy my house today. Casey can do that too. Casey can also help you with land, investment property, and all of your real estate needs. Check out Casey Bridges today at hoppermscom or give him a call at 601-724-1435. And also, um, our friends at Watkins Construction and Roofing have hooked me up with some tickets for 5th Squad Night at the Mississippi Braves game this Saturday night. First pitch is at 605, I believe. I've got a family four-pack of tickets to give away. It's not going to be a contest, nothing like that. But the first person who emails me and says, Clay, I want them, they're yours. Email me at clay, C-L-A-Y, at W-Y-A-B.com. First person, they're yours. And if you're the second or third or fourth person, I will let you know that uh, somebody beat you to it. So thank okay. you to Watkins and Construction and Roofing for those tickets. All right. Okay. So one of the things that has, you know, to, we got off track a little earlier. We were talking about redevelopment and what's their what's their fancy word they use for uh, revitalization? Revitalization. 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 Well, WLBT had a story last night. I believe this is Howard Ballou here about some revitalization projects or demolition projects going on in Jackson. And as you know, with my past with Save Jackson and posting pictures of abandoned buildings, this is right up my alley. And okay. I'm never one to get upset about a building being torn down. Mm. But I am a little uh, miffed when I hear that they're going to redo something in one of the worst areas in town and because it, it just screams red lights and where's the money really going. And where are it coming from? It's coming from taxpayer dollars. You know it. Yeah. So let, let's listen to this. This is last night on WLBT. 
property for over 20 years, attracting vagrants, crime, and dropping property values all around them. We're talking about abandoned buildings here in Jackson. Now, tonight, David Kenny joins us live with more on a resurgence to revitalize these properties, Dave. Yeah, over my shoulder here is the old Broma strip mall off of Forest and Watkin Drive. This property here sat empty since the 90s, abandoned. Nobody did anything with it, but that could soon change. It's just been dead. At one time, it was a thriving corner. I mean, it had a club, Gentle Benz was there, Bromos was there, and it just made, uh, it made the neighborhood. Bernard Williams is talking about this abandoned strip mall just a couple blocks from his home. Developers purchased the property in recent months and have been talking with community leaders about bringing in commercial business, maybe a neighborhood Walmart or a credit union. Whatever the case it may be, it may not look like this anymore to the delight of residents. Anything to improve the neighborhood and to bring back some economic development to this area. That spot has been abandoned for so many years, and it'll be very convenient if they put something there. It don't matter what they put there. I didn't even know this existed. As long as they keep that spot from well, looking abandoned. Tell you about In this. South Jackson, the abandoned Apple Ridge Shopping Center Here also expected to disappear soon. The city of Jackson plans to demo what's left standing on the property. Pastor Lanford Porter owns a church across the street and, here comes and wants the to dream. develop it into a retirement home. We hopefully will have 41 bedroom units and 42 bedroom units right there at that property. I believe that when people are surrounded by beautiful things, it sort of changes their attitude about their own neighborhood. So once this property is demolished and hauled off and can be used for more constructive purposes, it's going to be a plus. And remember all the stories we've done in the past on the Jackson Enterprise Center. Pillaged by metal thieves this and is set the on OG fire multiple building. times over the years, it too has been bought by a developer, this one out of Florida. They tell me they plan to build apartments with a food court and other retail and shopping units. Construction on that project could start by year's end. All right, so, so okay. what happens in these situations is there are a lot of federal dollars being thrown around right now. So when you see a news story like that, and, and I hate to be the negative guy here in the room on this one. Hey, if you're going to you're gonna out-negative me, you're really doing well, something. Here's what's fixing to happen. You've got all this CARES Act money that you can get a hold, one-time money, and everybody's going to get to the table. They're going to get a pile of money, and, say, and they go and buy a piece of blighted property in Jackson for next to nothing. They get the loans. They get everything in place to get millions of dollars for the project, and then they bankrupt the project, and they back out and go home. Exactly. So I want to, in one year from today, I'm going to write it down on my planner. Lord willing, in the creek don't rise, if Clay Edwards is still on the radio um, talking about Jackson, we're going to revisit this and let's see where all of these projects stand. And I want to backtrack to the Apple Ridge room real oh, quick. I want, okay. Go ahead. I want to say this. I don't know what it is with tearing down abandoned property in the hopes of turning it into retirement homes. That's the same thing they're saying they're going to do. With the um, old Holiday Inn, Southwest Holiday Inn on 80. Right. It's the same thing they're talking about they're going to do at Apple Ridge. I want to know where the money is coming from. And look, I don't care necessarily, but I just want to know that it's real. Right. I want to know that you're really talking about following through. Correct. You know, there must be big, there must be a lot of government money available. There's tons of government for, money available. To, to build retirement homes for, I guess, the, a HUD version of a retirement home. Correct. You know, sub, government subsidized retirement homes. Right. I'm just interested to see what happens. And the question is, on those government funded retirement homes, now you're taking that property off the tax rolls. Yep. But like the Broma, now Broma was a grocery store when Sunflower and Jitney Jungle pulled out of that area. Mm -hmm. And across from that was the Tiffany, remember old Tiffany's Entertainment Center? That's the, that's that shopping that's center. That, that's right there. Okay. And that's okay. That, now that, that, that shopping center needs to be torn down too. Yes, it does. And, you know, and it, I think over there there's another old thing that's now uh, Wigs or Us or whatever, or Wigs, Wigs Be Gone. We're over there by, by it's across yeah. from Lake Haka, right? Right. Yeah, okay. And, you know, and, and it took, you know, Energy just tore down the old. What, uh, a, wa what a wasted thing. that is. They're going to they're drain that. I mean, that was. And it's going to take for, ne for never to. <laughs> to do anything with that big piece of property. Yeah. I mean, why drain it? Why tear it down? Can't you do some tests and say it's safer than. Well, what was wrong with the building? Why would they tear the furnace down? 
I, well, they're, they, they they don't have a purpose for it no more. What do you mean they don't have a purpose? They're going to go to renewable energy? I don't know, but they're not using they're not doing it there anymore. I know. I I, I used to know the exact answer, but I, I don't recall. I mean, that's just I re- I, Lake Haiku was was my passion for a little while, and then the second they said they were draining it, I was like, wasted energy. Yes. I mean, there's no point in talking about this anymore no. because yeah, there you have a great example of a potential gold mine in the middle of Jackson. Right. You know. Us, I always hear a lot about African Americans wanting to reinvest in their community, and, okay. I, and I that would have been a great of, water park. It, it would have been because the water was always what seventy five degrees, sixty five yep. degrees. Yeah, and it would you, have been a great opportunity to see black, and, young black money reinvest into 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 itself. You could redevelop that. It could have been an absolute gold mine for that area. Now, I mean, you got to have big vision. Sometimes it takes somebody thinking you're crazy, but, you know, to follow through. Like when a mayor of Canton, <laughs> hey, or opening up a bar in downtown Jackson. Yeah. we've been. We have been on both sides of this. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I 100% love seeing um, young money invest into the city. What's going on in downtown? Look, I know I'm negative, but and I know white conservatives have a different view on things. And me and Chip were talking about this during the break. There is a lot of development going on, oh, yes. on around downtown Jackson. But it, but the demographics have changed. It's a lot of black money, right? You know, going in and redoing these buildings, and you know, it, I'm not saying that white people aren't welcome because they are absolutely are. I don't want to make this about right. race, but white suburban nights typically aren't going to go to predominantly well, black let me put it businesses. This way. If you recall an area, so of in my in, in 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 their minds, they think nothing's going on because just because they don't go to it, right? Well, one thing nobody goes into these areas. Yeah, you know the the area. It's like, for instance, let's let's take State Street uh, from the Capitol down to uh, Highway 80. There was every car dealership in the world used to be there. Every car dealership in the world. Now you have vacant car dealership buildings everywhere, so you can go down there and get those buildings for a reasonable price. And turn them into other, something else, but you've got to do it with your own money. You got to make it happen. I've noticed on Capitol Street on a Friday or Saturday night now, you probably have five or ten small uh, bars where people dress up and dress a lot better to mm-hmm. go hang out. You, you do. You have these higher end lounges, right? You, the, the the day of the the mega club are kind right. of over. Yes, they I do. mean for now anyway. And, and I will also say this: the mega club doesn't. I, and I was one that owned a large one. Yeah. We, and you, it used to. The, we had the mentality of we want it all, yep. or we're not going to be happy until we get it all. And the bands will get bigger till we get it all. Yeah. And that was just the way it was. And uh, and you look at those, and it actually killed the small bar mentality that goes on. And well, people are back to where they want to. They want to hang out close to their where they live. Right. Like I'm out in Brandon now. Ten years ago, you couldn't do this, but last night we were sitting there talking about it. Uh, I was sitting there with uh, Gardner Minshew's dad, Flint, and Fred right. Shanks, and a couple others, talking about, here we are, who would have thunk it, sitting in downtown Brandon having a drink. Exactly. You know what I mean? And uh, it, that's pretty cool. So people are getting back to staying closer to where they live. Oh, yeah. If you live in Jackson, you're a lot more likely to go hang out at a at a, at a lounge or whatever I on mean, Capitol I mean, like Street. back in the day in North Jackson, you had probably 14 bars or watering holes and small restaurants all over the place, locally owned, and you'd go in and hang out, and you had them from the Dutch bar to uh, um, uh, to what was that? what was that guy's name? Big Mike or something like that. Had Big a, Mike, had Mike Von Figlio. Yeah, had several places. Well, he did. He had. He did a smart thing. He had. He did what you and I would call what we would wanted to do. You open up one on each side of Jackson. And they were all Big Mites 1, Big Mites 2. And then he would take the bands and rotate them from town to town because people drank and hung out in their area. They yeah. didn't – South Jackson people didn't go over here unless they wanted to fight. That was the way y'all yeah. – the South Side Posse did it, right? South Side. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, but, you know, and you, well, we tried that with the Buffalo Chips. We had Buffalo Chips on the Rez. Right. And then we had the Old Bar Nothing, which was Buffalo Chips South. Right. And it kind of worked, but, you had, but you, at that point there were so few bars in between. Right. That people went to both. It's like, for instance, if you want to do a pub crawl in Jackson, you go, okay, we're going to stop here and go to where? You've got to get back in a car to go. There, there is no concept of... No, you've got to go... You can't you got, be getting in a car to go drink at the next got, bar. you got two or three bars in Fondren, or really, you got really just have one that's a bar with that Fondren public, and then you yeah. actually have the barbecue place, whatever. But Nothing against people, people will tell me 20 things after I get off the air. Right. But you go through there, and then you got to go to Martin's and Howland Miles, and you got to bounce over to uh, like the Capitol Grill area. 
You know, it's just so spread out, and well, the suburbs are a, are a part of that issue too. And now, when you start moving around, you got to make sure they have water where they can flush the toilets. Man, I, the water thing is just mind boggling. You know, I don't know what you do there. But look, you listen to the Clay Edwards Show. We're going to take our last break, and we'll be right back here live in the Generator Power Solutions Studio. And if you want to call into the show, six zero one. 879-0002 on the Black Axis Throwing Club. There you go. You're listening to The Clay Edwards Show. We are in the Generator Power Solutions Studio. And if you need a home standby generator, give Generator Power Solutions a call today at 601-519-4064 or check them out online at generatorpowersolutionsllc.com. Shout out to Dirty D. He's... Just said he's listening. <laughs> What's up, Daryl? <laughs> yeah. So, Chip and I were talking during the break, and we got a call from one of our one of my favorite callers. He didn't want to be on the air today, but you know, he, he did bring up the Jackson. You know, you're getting all this. I, I'm just calling it CARES Act money. That's exactly what it is. It's yeah. one time money, and it's huge. And, it, uh, and if you get it, you got to spend it. Yeah, I mean that's why when that's why when Antar won the won the Democratic primary, he was on the news singing and crying and. Yeah. Singing hymns and freeing the land and well, if and, he can and all that because he knows. Look at it this way. Also, if you run bond money through your own law firm, yep. you get one percent of each one. Sure, <laughs> you know. So there's, Plus there, expenses. There, there's a lot of money out there, man, and we're not getting any of it. That's right. You know, and by we, I mean the citizens. Right. I mean, these politicians in these Democrat cities, and, the, and I'm sure there's some conservative ones too. Let me rephrase: these politicians. Or about to rake it. It in. is not a route black and white. It's not about Republican and Democrat. It's about green. Yep. That's and the Green Party is not the one that Biden pushes. It's just the one that he benefits from. Shad White is gonna have more to do over the next twenty four months when when all this audit shakes out and you know, speaking of that DHS, when it all comes out in the shake, who lied, who got unemployment benefits when they didn't need them. Who, who gave consulting contracts to their friends? Right. Who did all this stuff? Uh, it, well, you know, it's gonna it's gonna be amazing to watch this unfold. Believe it or not, the state auditor has taken computers out of all the buildings in Canton several times over the last three or four years. He has his own office set up inside the courthouse. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, that's going to happen. You know, look, I really do like Shad White, but my gripe with Shad White has been. There has to be something going on in Jackson. Uh, Jackson, Canton. You know, and but you, he does the small cities around. And I know, he, you know, you're, well, get, you're getting the water bill collector from, from BFE, Mississippi. I know there's mass corruption going on in the Tri-County area. Why don't we hear about that? I don't, I don't like the no, – well, they, the, we've been told that they don't – the thing I always hear is they, they say that it's so big that they're scared of what they may find. The well, wormhole is too deep. You got to you got to start digging. You got to start digging. That's exactly why I ran for office in Canton and everything. You just got to start somewhere. Yeah. And if you don't start somewhere, you'll never get started. And it'll just get deeper. I reference back to my interview with former city commissioner Doug Shanks. There you go. When he's, I asked him, I was like, Doug, if you were mayor today and you had the magic wand to save Jackson, where do you start? He's like, you just got to pick one brick, one street, one house. Start there. And work your way out, and be no, and, and it'll be and, noticed. And, and, and you have you just gotta pick somewhere and start going in one direction and start. And and look, I've often said that if you start downtown and just start working outwards, you know, it ta- it will take longer. If I think that you need to start closer, let's say like at High Street, going toward downtown, yeah. because your thing is, if people don't see improvement. Mm-hmm. People aren't going to travel down there to see that it's all been. Yeah, rebuilt. you definitely need to the, the exits. Ellis Avenue looks like Beirut, yeah, right? And this is what people see. The hotel they didn't tear down is half painted on the side. The old Hunt Club side that yes. faces two, two, I-20. Yeah, yeah. And it's been like that for over a year. So yeah. it ain't like they just decided to. I mean, you, you have to start somewhere. But people, unfortunately, you have to be a salesman along the way and make sure you put it where people can see, hey, they're cleaning this area up. Yep. All right, look, Chip, we had a great week of shows. I appreciate you. Good luck with whatever's going on in Canton today. Coming up next on the Jim Thorne Show, you've got blues musician Thomas Jackson joining Jim. And if you missed any of today's show, it will be available shortly on the Clay Edwards Show podcast, available on any and all major podcasting and music streaming platforms. Peace. Out. 
Thanks for listening. Tune in next week as the Clay Edwards Show discusses all that is going on in and around the city of Jackson. This concludes our broadcast day. Right here on 103.9 WYAB.